the 25 years of my long career, I use the word long, but it doesn't seem to be long at all. It looks like it had just happened like a few years. So the 25 years have been excellent in terms of me able to do what I really like to do, that is absorb knowledge, create new knowledge, and share the knowledge with others. So 25 years, even though it appears long, uh, is actually ample opportunity I felt I could learn a lot of things through interactions with the other scientists. Uh, I work in a cross-disciplinary, interdisciplinary way, uh, which is not so common 25 years ago, where most researchers are monodisciplinary. But now the world is uh, recognizing the need for cross-disciplinary research, especially when we need to develop solutions for uh, humanity that is facing, for example, healthcare challenges, uh, climate-related challenges, sustainability, even more important is mental health. So all these require solutions, and solutions require cross-disciplinary approaches. So in my 25 years, if somebody asks, what have you done? Essentially, I try to learn different topics, different disciplines with a common goal. In this case, what I have done is, I always felt the nature, when we look at it closely, it has a beautiful organization and it's a hierarchical organization at a different length scales. So I thought I should start at the, the length scales that are not investigated among the materials community. So mostly they were looking at a macro scale, millimeter scale, and a micron scale. So when I entered this field of material science 25 years ago, I started observing at a nano scale and I pioneered establishing a nanotechnology center or institute in Singapore and we pioneered this field. And how did we put a focus on this one is the human body is hierarchically organized, beautiful, uh, living organism. So inside the human body, we have subcellular structures which are a nanometer scale. Nanometer means is about 1,000 times smaller than a micron. Micron is 1,000 times smaller than a millimeter. Millimeter is 1,000 times smaller than a meter. So we are about, my height for example is 1.5 plus 1.6 meters. So it's just to give an idea. So we are really looking at such a finer dimension or length scale. So at that length scale, if we can organize materials, they seem to have a certain influence on the cells that are there in our body. In our body has a trillions of cells, and these trillions of cells, they function beautifully. That's why we, we behave the way we are and feel good the way we are. The, the basis is these cells are surrounded with these nanoscale uh, structures which has an influence on the cell function and behavior. And these structures are actually made by the cells themselves. So cells secrete these molecules, create their environment, and then those uh, the symbiotic relation creates a perfect equilibrium. So my interest has been for the 25 years looking at what are these nano structures, how we can uh, synthetically make them, what I call a technique called electrospinning, uh, which uh, I've been doing for the last 25 years. And I'm glad that I could uh, write easy to read textbooks, which helped uh, thousands of researchers around the world. Now, there are many publications that get published every year, at least a few thousand papers. And it's a, one of the most popular field in the biomedical uh, domain. Uh, best way to look at it is, uh, 25 years ago, if you look at a textbook, you will not find this technique mentioned. But now, every major uh, reference in a biomate biomaterials books, uh, there would be a, a small section definitely uh, reference, referencing to the, the topic I mentioned as a technique, which is electrospinning. So in other words, 25 years of effort led us to uh, contribute the usefulness of a technique called electrospinning 
and that's already recorded in most of the books that are written in recent times, uh, used for teaching uh, future generation of students. And this technique using which I make nanofibers, and these nanofibers and nanoparticles have an influence on the way cells behave, and that's how we understand how exactly the tissues of the human body, organs of the human body are functioning. And then that gives us the insights, how can we define and design a future biomaterials for uh, advanced uh, way of uh, managing the issues, uh, healthcare issues of the human body. So any researcher in this uh, time of the humanity, civilization, they like to see their contributions translated into products and eventually used by a large number of human beings. So one of the key challenge in translation of biomedical uh, research is um, regulatory compliance. We really need to make sure our innovation produces uh, outcomes that are uh, meet the criteria expected by the regulatory bodies. And second challenge is, uh, this is an expensive effort, requires a significant amount of resources. So I believe one of the hurdles is uh, finding the resources. While finding the resources appears to be challenging, actually the most important challenge is there's a lot of money out there, but the investors need to believe that you have that commitment, you have the drive to see it through and make sure the translation works. We always wonder what is the future of the field we are working in. I happen to be working on biomedi biomedical materials, so obviously it's natural for me to ask the question, what is the future of biomedical materials? I strongly believe there are two important directions. One is intelligent biomaterials, second is a sustainable biomedical materials. Why? Because the world would like to have a better climate, uh, less extreme weather. Uh, we know that it is contributed or caused by human activities. So there is a worldwide consensus about uh, human role and how they, they can mitigate those uh, contributions by human to the climate change and most governments agreed upon carbon neutrality by 2050. What it means is in terms of the materials they have to be more sustainable materials or sustainable biomedical materials. While that part is done another important facet is uh, human beings have access to many resources but at the same time uh, there is a concern about uh, mental health and there is a need for a better material, better system so that we can not only take the physical health, we can also take care of the mental health. And that's where intelligent biomaterials and systems comes into the play. So in other words, I believe the future directions of my field, which is biomedical materials, number one, intelligent biomedical materials. Number two, sustainable biomedical materials. With these, if you are an aspiring scientist or uh, wanting to be an entrepreneur, uh, if you can apply your um, knowledge and your ne network, and if you can make a progress in this direction, you will make a huge difference and I think you'll be happy as well as you make many others happy. When I look at anyone, we all have the same stages, that is we start young and then we mature and become somebody in life. So from the hindsight, my own experience, what would I say to the young people is, first thing is you are already doing something very important, which is scientific research. Scientific research generates new knowledge. New knowledge is necessary for the success and sustainability of human being on planet Earth. In other words, you are actually doing the most important thing as a human being. No matter what happens, that's the most important thing. I firmly believe in that and I think you, you as an ang researcher, uh, involved in the process of scientific research, knowledge generation, 
and transmission, you are already doing something worthy. Second aspect, you always remember, uh, scientific research gives you the methodology and way of understanding everything. So it's a process, it's a mechanism using which you can solve the challenges you are facing in a professional life and personal life. So it's a, it's a methodology, it's actually a tool that is made available to you through the process of how to do research, how you actually make sense of research. Since you are already doing it, you just need to realize you are in the right path and you just need to take advantage of them and you will be happy and well, look at me, I'm reasonably happy. So I guess uh, it's not a bad uh, one of the uh, bad direction, it's actually a useful direction to go. Thank you.